Had, uh, I'm here. Um, too bad Miguel and Jose Antonio could not come because uh, uh, they they did a lot of work. We all did a lot of work uh, for this open lab. Um, I'm not only going to speak about the development of the open lab, but also give you a little bit of the history and and how we we came to start uh, this collaboration. That is. Uh, um, demonstrating to be very useful. So, um, this one, okay, thank you. Okay, maybe just a little bit of um, uh, geography and history. Um, it was Simon Bolivar's uh, great dream to have a very, very large country that he called uh, Gran Colombia, uh, that was very rich, was large, and also very varied. Uh, but before he died, uh, Gran Colombia had already dissolved. And uh, it, it could have been a very, very large country in South America because it included Venezuela, Colombia, what we know now as Colombia, that at the time had also Panama, so, and uh, a little bit of Ecuador. But um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you uh, where we are located. We are here in Venezuela and uh, Colombia, and uh, uh, Merida is around here, where, where Miguel and I work, and Jose Antonio works here in Bucaramanga. So it's uh, actually a very close um, a, a ride by car. It's uh, very convenient. And uh, so we, we have been uh, a, establishing again a collaboration that uh, at some point uh, stopped uh, because of different reasons. Okay, um, a little bit of history. Um, just, I'm sorry. That space, maybe this one is better. Okay. Um, just a few months after the uh, report by Wilhelm Drongen uh, on the uh, discovery of X-rays, um, a Venezuelan chemist and inventor uh, already designed some uh, X-ray tubes, and of course he had to to do pretty much the same that Rongen did. He um, he uh, took some uh, photographs of the hand of the uh, this is the hand of the wife of the president at that time. They are at the National Academy of uh, Medicine in Venezuela, and this is one of the X-ray tubes that uh, that he used. So it was extensively used even from, from the beginning um, for uh, medical uh, purposes. But um, crystallography had to uh, wait a little bit. And it was, um, we can say that uh, around 1967, some Argentinian uh, crystallographers, Mario Amsel, I don't have a, a picture of Leo Beca, uh, Sergio Baggio, uh, and uh, uh, Mario Caparelli, uh, a little bit later on, started to work in Venezuela and started the crystallography lab at, uh, at the Universidad Central in Caracas. Uh, also, uh, a little bit after they started to work, Edris uh, de Hill started uh, also uh, to work there in Caracas, but then she moved to Merida, uh, approximately in 1967, which is when uh, our School of uh, Sciences was founded in, in Merida. So um, she founded right away the crystallography lab, and uh, we celebrated last year our 45th anniversary. So um, Eldris had carried out actually a uh, master's degree and PhD work with uh, Larry Dahl in Wisconsin. And um, I think it's, this is a kind of a recent picture of him. Um, so uh, she had, she was very well prepared, and she's. Uh, very, very strong lady, so she was able to set up the lab. Uh, she actually participated in the 8th uh, International Congress and General Assembly of the UCR that took place in Stony Brook in 1969. And uh, since our uh, undergraduate degree uh, requires to have a thesis uh, uh, work uh, done by, for at least one year, one of the first students in the chemistry department, in the, in the newly formed chemistry department, was Valentina Rivera, who, um, after graduation, uh, started to uh, went to Cambridge and did her PhD with uh, George Sheldon. So we have some kind of um, 
um, pedigree there. Okay, the research interest of the lab was very varied because it, it, it was uh, the only lab in that part of the country and we had to um, cater to different uh, tastes. So uh, the labs worked in semiconductors, natural products, organic metallic compounds, different organic compounds uh, that were synthesized. But more recently we have been uh, working with pharmaceutical materials and um, uh, even from the beginning there has been a lot of uh, collaboration and service to the geology department in the uh, School of Engineering in our university with the oil industry and the aluminum industries. Uh, we also um, do analysis of kidney stones for uh, the university hospital and several public hospitals and, and private hospitals in the in the east, uh, western part of the country, and also so to some pharmaceutical companies. This is one of the materials that we recently prepared, a new phase of uh, bronchodilator clenbuterol that uh, we reported recently. Okay, um, since the very beginning, uh, we uh, started to um, uh, conduct a series of uh, schools, and this is uh, from one school from 1993, I think. We have, uh, I'm sorry that I took this picture, right. it was already framed, so it doesn't show very well. But uh, here we have Ron Jenkins, Bob Snyder from ICDD, and uh, Bernie Winch from MIT, uh, who uh, were instructors in that school, dedicated to powder diffraction. Uh, some people, and, and in this school we had um, several attendants from Colombia and from Venezuela. Jose Antonio was here actually, in this school, in 1983. Uh, we had uh, other schools, but one of the most, um, uh, another memorable one was uh, in 2000. We also had uh, Ron Jenkins, Bob Snyder, I think at that time we had Daniel Well. Uh, but uh, I wanted to show uh, some of our students who started to become crystallographers at that time and one of our colleagues, uh, Reynaldo, who also attended the, this, uh, this school. Uh, more recently we have had uh, organic uh, uh, chemistry in the solid state uh, uh, schools. And, uh, but I, I think what, uh, one of the major points in um, in, in our tradition for, uh, for courses is the school that we had uh, organized in 1990. It was the first Ibero-American school on crystallography as part of the 11th uh, Congress, uh, Ibero-American Congress in crystallography. Uh, this took place in 1990. And uh, we can see here Professor Eldris, our, uh, the founder of the group, and Valentina. But we can see also George Bill from uh, Germany, Bob Schneider, Bernie Winch, Herb Hauptmann, um, I don't know who this one is, uh, I think it's me. Um, Andres Vegas from CSIC in Spain. Uh, Javier Isser, one of the first crystallographers who actually went uh, to work in the US since he was very young. Uh, Bruce Foxman, uh, Bill Duax, uh, Fernando Laos from Spain. And uh, we also have here um, Jose Antonio now and other uh, people who have become very important uh, scientists and crystallographers in their countries. Uh, here we have Daniel Vega from Argentina. He was, uh, I think, an undergraduate or early graduate student at that time. I don't know. And Laura Bucio also, uh, who has become also a very prominent uh, person in Mexico. So we had a very nice group of people. Some of these um, continue to work in crystallography. Others uh, move to other areas of chemistry. And um, uh, for example, two of our students, Alexander and Teresa, and uh, I, this colleague, uh, colleague of us, Reynaldo, they, um, uh, they have been working at IBIC uh, in Caracas. Uh, since 1995, they purchased a Riaco diffractometer that was uh, upgraded uh, with a CCD detector around 2003. And in 2004, we had um, a school uh, in Caracas at IBIC where uh, they organized that meeting and uh, some people uh, like uh, uh, Martin Martinez from Spain, uh, Bill Duax was also there, uh, participated as instructors. Well, their research interest uh, is mostly in supramolecular chemistry, crystal engineering and uh, other um, uh, type of uh, hybrid materials. 
they sent me uh, some of these uh, slides. Uh, these are some polyoxometalates. Okay, but then Reynaldo moved to Maracaibo to another uh, node that the EBIC um, created there, and one of our uh, more recent graduate students started to work there and initiated also crystallography there, a uh, crystallography lab there. We uh, had in 2013 a Ritbell course that Miguel and I taught uh, in, in Maracaibo. This is part of what they, what they do. They uh, also work in some pharmaceutical materials and in some nano uh, structure type of uh, uh, materials. Okay, um, this is one, this uh, view of the, uh, or a picture of the recent members of the lab. They uh, enjoy uh, themselves near the beach also. And in Colombia, uh, there have been several uh, X-ray labs um, all over the country, but uh, the one that we have been closer because Jose Antonio went to, to the um, course in 1990 is uh, the one in Bucaramanga. They organized a meeting that has been very successful that includes not only X-ray diffraction but also X-ray fluorescence uh, in 2012 in Colombia. And uh, this, uh, this lab, since uh, they started in around 1970, uh, has been one of the major service labs uh, for X-ray diffraction in Colombia. So we decided to uh, conduct the Rigaku Open Lab at uh, Universidad Industrial de Santander in Bucaramanga in Colombia for several reasons. We have, uh, for example, in Venezuela we have uh, a currency exchange control, so it's difficult to get uh, foreign currency. Um, and uh, at, in Bucaramanga, they had uh, bought uh, last year and installed a brand new state-of-the-art uh, X-ray diffractometer, a dual-source uh, diffractometer. So for many economic and practical reasons, we decided to, to have the, the open lab there. They have a very nice lab, very nice facilities, two power diffractometers, uh, the single crystal diffractometer with dual-source, uh, ample space for sample preparation. Uh, this is a view of the of the goniometer and the detector, and a very nice group of people who uh, are very very uh, enthusiastic about their work. Uh, the site is uh, also a new uh, place, so uh, and it had a lot of the facilities that we needed to have uh, the the open lab. Uh, so, uh, as uh, Miguel mentioned, uh, Miguel, uh, Jose Antonio, and I organized a meeting along with Aki from Rigaco, Akihiko Iwata from Rigaco, and here is uh, Eric Reinheimer, who was also sent uh, by Rigaco about four days before the open lab started to, to start uh, with data collection and um, making sure that the diffractometer was going to be okay. And Tommy Kubo, also from Rigaco in Japan, who was uh, essentially in the uh, setup of the, of the equipment at the beginning. The instructors, as, as I mentioned, were Jose Antonio, Miguel, um, I, I also had some lectures, Eric, Alexander from Ivy Caracas, and Belkis, one of our graduate students who became a professor in our lab, uh, gave the main lectures, but also we incorporated uh, Teresa uh, from Ivy, uh, in Caracas, eh, Reynaldo from IVIC Zulia, eh, Julia, one of our former graduate students from IVIC Zulia too, and uh, Rodolfo Moreno from uh, Universidad del Valle in Cali, Colombia. Well, the program included, um, and eh, uh, as in other open labs, uh, the fundamentals of crystallography, the uh, diffraction phenomena, eh, eh, several uh, lectures, but uh, starting on Wednesday, we had practical sessions. Uh, we divided the students in groups, and some of them were working in uh, data sets while one group was being uh, uh, working at the lab with Eric, uh, where he was showing how the diffractometer worked and, and giving some pointers about uh, data collection. The participants, uh, we had 34 participants from Colombia and Venezuela, almost the, the same amount. And we had uh, one student from Bolivia, Julian, and one young researcher from Costa Rica. 
they got along very, very well. They keep in touch, actually, they have uh, a WhatsApp uh, kind of uh, uh, text uh, message thing, and they keep in touch uh, almost every week. So they, they have made a very, very group, good group of uh, students. Most of them had um, previous experience in crystallography. Some of them were very, very experienced. Some of them were not so experienced, but had already solved structures. And very few of them uh, did not have uh, a, any experience at all. But uh, we made sure that they were uh, assigned to groups uh, where they will have uh, some people to help them. So this was a distribution of the practical sessions. Here is Eric with a group of people showing the, uh, the different tometer. We distributed uh, programs, open access programs and data sets uh, of structures that we had already worked on uh, for the students to, to work. But the people from Bucaramanga worked on their um, data sets. Uh, here are some of the practical sessions. We had uh, several uh, rooms where we could have uh, a, all the students with their laptops uh, after uh, having the programs uh, installed and uh, they will work uh, little by little some of the structures. Uh, the students were required to present the results, even if it was uh, already a published structure, they were required to present uh, the results uh, in a, a conference type of uh, presentation. They did it in Spanish, but uh, that was a start. And uh, we had ample media coverage. There, was, there were some uh, interviews on TV and uh, radio and uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the press. Um, it was uh, featured in the uh, Rigaco newsletter. Rigaco provided a very nice banner uh, to promote the event. Uh, the, the sponsors included the IUCR, the uh, Vice Rectoria of Research and uh, Outreach. Uh, they were very, very supportive. They, they were, uh, along with Rigaco, the main three sources of. Uh, of support, but Andy Ten Technica, who is the uh, representative of Rigaco in Colombia, provided some support for coffee breaks, and ICDD provided some support for uh, our travel and uh, for um, uh, provided some test databases, uh, ICDD databases, so that uh, the students could use not only uh, the CSD but also uh, compare and uh, search on the powder database the laboratory at uh, Bucaramanga and our lab and other sources from Venezuela also uh, supported uh, the students uh, for part of the travel. Uh, it was interesting that uh, one of the days that we were working, uh, the commission who oversees the use of the funds that the lab received to get the diffractometer visited by surprise. They were kind of waiting for that, but they didn't know when it was going to happen. and. Uh, they showed up uh, that same week, and they saw everybody working. They saw a lot of uh, foreigners. They saw uh, the Rigaku people working. They saw Eric uh, um, uh, aligning the diffractometer and collecting data and working like crazy there. And uh, uh, so it was a, it was a very very good impression for the commission. So I think they were very uh, very happy that uh, they put the money in very good hands. This is the, the vice dean for uh, research. He was very supportive of, uh, of the... So we are uh, working on the reorganization of the Venezuelan Crystallography Society. We have a committee that is going to uh, 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 check uh, the, the status because uh, some things have, uh, need to be changed. Uh, Sociedad Colombiana, it, it, it's in progress. They, they have to, um, they are a little bit, a little bit uh, further behind, but uh, they, they are working on that. We showed also the movie, not only at the Open Lab, Juanma's movie on the, the mystery of the giant crystals, uh, at the Open Lab, but also in several uh, occasions uh, during the year. We had a special course for undergraduate students on diffraction and structure, and Miguel and Alexander gave a, a very nice, uh, concise uh, a workshop for the oil industry in Caracas. We had several activities that incorporated crystal growth uh, and crystallography in the undergraduate curricula, and we celebrated in, um, in a way our anniversary last year, 45th anniversary last year. 
We plan to, uh, actually we had planned it for last year, but we could not uh, a, a have the course uh, on powder diffraction that we, we thought that we were going to have. Um, but we are exploring uh, having it in Colombia again or uh, in Merida. It, it will depend on, on several economical issues uh, and also some uh, logistic because we are having some trouble with uh, a, a, the offer of flights to Venezuela. So that, that will be, we have to think about that. But Merida is a little bit less expensive, Colombia is a little bit more expensive, so we also have to, to think about that. They have two powder diffractometers, we have only an old one, so that's also some consideration that we have to, to make there. Uh, we count on the support of uh, ACA and ICDD, as Cora mentioned, uh, for the, to support some of the speakers. And um, uh, we think that uh, if we do a little bit of a better work, and maybe with a little bit more support from other sources, we can uh, get some people from Central America. We, both Colombia and Venezuela, are located in very strategic uh, places, and it's, uh, the access is very easy, it's not too expensive. Uh, we could not um, invite some uh, uh, students from Uruguay and Argentina that had applied to our open lab in Colombia because the, the cost of the travel was very, very high. But I think we can be a good uh, place to have um, courses uh, that uh, can attract people from the northern part of, uh, of Latin America. We continue to work on the societies. Uh, we are uh, working on some museum activities and uh, some outreach activities, and of course, continue participating in ACA and the recently formed LACA, the IUCR, and also the SARX meeting. Um, well, uh, as I mentioned before, the students got along very, very well. They, uh, they are in touch, and uh, I think that we are um, uh, teaching not only the future crystallographers, but also the future instructors in crystallography for courses like this one or some other courses. I think uh, we have um, a very, very good chance there. So, well, Venezuela and Colombia, like siblings, we um, discuss, we fight, we have some troubles. But uh, when it comes to the International Year of Crystallography, we, uh, we did our best to, to collaborate and uh, we liked it. Thank you.